This is the Lockpicking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a Yale Ashore Electronic Deadbolt, model YRD216. A special thanks goes to Spencer in Phoenix, Arizona, who sent me this $190 smart lock. Now I should start by saying that I don't really have the expertise to evaluate the security of the wireless features. I've heard mixed reviews on that front, but don't really know enough to comment. As for the mechanical components, I have taken this apart and don't see any obvious blunders that would allow a low-scale bypass. And that's what we should expect from a company like Yale that's been making locks for 150 years. But that's not to say that the pick resistance doesn't leave quite a bit to be desired. So let's see what it takes to pick this open. We have a quick set keyway. I'm going to use top of the keyway tension with this 50 thousandths thick pry bar and a standard hook in 25 thousandths. Nothing on one. Might have gotten a click on two. Click on three and we dropped into a false set. Four is binding, little counter rotation there. And we just got this open. Okay, those who were paying careful attention may have noticed that I only picked three of the five pins, two, three, and four. And if I look at the key, my best guess is that we have driver pins that were too short in slots one and five. But let's take this apart and see if we can confirm that. Okay, we have a few screws on the back to get this open. Okay, here is the lock cylinder. Now we need to remove the clip on the back. That allows us to remove the tailpiece. And it looks like there is a shield in the back to prevent bypasses. That's always nice to see. Now we should just need a key and a follower to get this apart. Okay, we can see it's a six pin core. Only five chambers are keyed up. And it's unfortunate we have key pins with tapers on both sides. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You can see there's a taper on both ends. That makes it much easier to manufacture. It doesn't matter which way the key pin is stuck into the cylinder, but it also makes it much easier to pick. As for the driver pins, it's like a very shallow spool in slot one. Same on two. I'm not particularly pleased with the manufacturing on these spools. Looks very sloppy. I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. Okay, all of the driver pins are exactly the same and nothing to speak of with the springs. As for those sloppy driver pins, we can see they're not quite even. Let me zoom in on this a bit. Little notches in the side. Just doesn't look like the machine work was terribly precise. As for our issue with not having to pick chambers one and five, what we're going to do is put the key pin and the driver pin in. And we can see that that pin stack rests at the shear line. That means without a key inserted, neither one or five will stop this core from turning at all. So what they need to do to prevent that is put driver pins that are just a little bit longer in here. So that's certainly disappointing to see. In any case, that's all I have for you today on this Yale Ashore electronic deadbolt. Spencer, thank you very much for sending this my way. To everyone else, if you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.